All right, so I got the corners all squared away. And now I'm putting on the, I got the front bracket. The front bracket for the front motor. The front stepper motor. I don't know why everybody wants to turn that when they pick up a stepper motor, but they do. I do. I don't know why. Don't spin those very, well, you can when they're not connected. You're not really supposed to, but if they're connected to a circuit board, you're not supposed to spin these because they do generate current because there are magnets in there and poles and it basically acts as a generator when you spin it. Uh, let's put a split washer or lock washer I always call them. They call them split lock washers so I guess that's to accommodate everybody who might have a different name for it. Some call it a split washer, some call it a lock washer, so they call them a split lock washer. So there will be no confusion. There will be no infusion of confusion, nor contusion. I'm probably really loud on the audio here because my mouth is about six inches away from the microphone on this iPhone 5 that I'm recording with. I bought this iPhone 5 just to use it as a camera and it has been an excellent camera. iPhone 4 was the first iPhone really to have a decent camera. 4S slightly better and the 5 I mean, obviously the 6 and the 7 and the 8 will be better. But the 4S and the 5 were actually, they're, they're, you know, if you want just a decent camera, you can stop right there if you're not wanting to spend a lot of money. I think I paid $50 for this iPhone 5. Uh, it's incapable of making a cell call. There's something wrong with the cellular part of it. But I didn't care. All I wanted it for was the camera. And everything on it works except the cell thing. And so I just do Wi-Fi and I rarely even turn that on. Because like I said, I don't. I only use it for a camera. I hook it up via the USB to transfer everything to the, my Hackintosh, and so yeah, 50 bucks for this thing, and it's a it's a great little camera. If I keep doing black uh, pig man black t-shirt, and I probably will. If I ever start making any money, I'll probably buy a better camera. Uh, or maybe not, I don't know. I'd really like to get somebody else to do the on-camera stuff where I can just do the behind-the-scenes stuff. Alright, so there, that's installed. The uh, instructions said to get it darn near sitting right on top of the table, so there's a little bit of clearance there, and you had to make sure not to cant it left or right too much. I've got the, yes, I still have to think about it, the Y-axis belt installed. It's pretty simple. Uh, just goes around the front here of the front stepper motor for the Y-axis that goes to you and away from you. It runs under here. One end ties off to this stud. This goes around the pulley on the, the motor. Comes back here. Goes around. This idler pulley, which is just two bearings mounted to a stud, and then comes back and mounts to this stud. And you put the tension on there, get it pretty tight, and zip tie it off. And that's it. Slide back and forth. And so that's how that works. So here I'm installing the homing switch, the Y-axis homing switch, and I realize now that I uh, forgot to take the identification sticker off the front that's on there to identify the X from the Y. I've already removed it, but 
but I just stuck it back on there lightly just so I wouldn't confuse the two. Let's get that out of the way. So before I tighten this down, this has a T-nut in there so it can slide anywhere on this Y-axis rail. We have this stud here which mounts into the bed which hits the limit switch which stops stops your movement if you go too far if you've run your program too far uh, this keeps you from bottoming out and creating a, a situation with your motor sitting there trying to keep turning this stops that from happening because that can damage things so the idea here is to slide this up I think they said we want it we want it to engage the switch just before the V wheel hits the frame. So so we want it actually we want the switch to engage before the V wheel hits. So this is one of those things that can be adjusted later if you miss it a little bit, but I'm going to adjust it right there. I'm going to lock it down right there because that will have it hitting right before it hits there, so that should be fine. Lock that down. Actually, a little bit close. The V wheel's hitting the switch underneath there, but I believe I should be able to. Yeah. You can turn that clockwise a bit to miss that. That has your switch engaging later, but you can make up for that by dropping this down a little bit. So drop it down and then spin it a little bit to give clearance so that right there doesn't hit the back of the homing switch. So there, we're engaging the switch at least uh, well, it's about a quarter inch before we get to the edge. And if you and if you put this, I mean, you can go more conservative and put it down here farther. It's just going to cut down on how much um, how much work area you have on the x on the y axis. So that's why you don't want to go too crazy with it. So there's that one installed. We're not running the wiring yet. We're just installing the switches. Next, I'll flip it back over.